what is up my youtube family welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed what is up y'all i hope y'all are having a good week so far granny it just started y'all these faux locks are finally in the stage that i love them when they are not new when they look you know worn i look all earthy i'm very much giving mother nature out here in these streets you know kind of like if you got a little itch on your love below a little itching and burning you too shame to go to the doctor so you come find me and i whip you up this nasty little concoction and it just clears all of that up and then you just take a little extra badge back to your little partner put it in put it in their drink and they all cleared up too and nobody ever knows a thing no i'm just kidding go to the doctor so every other day it's a struggle not to take them down because i miss my wig so much you guys today's video is a request from cheyenne stewart cheyenne girl what is this you have sent to my phone if this is not the messiest of stories so far child if you are new here and you don't know you can request videos in the comment section i do not cover cases where children are the main victims i have before that's not my ministry child it's just too much for me anything else fair game since i got bella i wash my hands a million times a day we went for her shots which was our second round of shots. And her vet was like, make sure until we finish all of the shots, you are washing your hands all of the time. Because puppies, no matter how careful you are, can still get parasites. And some of these parasites, they can pass on to you, child. Granted, she is not tested positive for any parasites yet, but girl, I went home and had a nightmare that I had a belly full of worms after she told me that I did not know that. So now I'm washing my hands like crazy, which I was washing a lot beforehand already and i always forget to moisturize my hands after i wash them so child they be dry and crispy all of the time anywho let's get into today's video dolly was born walberga korschel in 1880 to german immigrant parents now they literally only have her birthday listed as 1880 i don't know if this was before the invention of months and days i don't even know if sis has a birth certificate because i could not confirm and i saw on the internet that it was a question of whether or not she was actually born in germany or if she was born after her parents moved to the u.s she did grow up in milwaukee wisconsin in this little area that was like a community of mostly german immigrants there is not a whole lot on the internet about her childhood not her early childhood but we do know at age 12, sis got her a little job down to this textile mill company owned by Fred William Osterreich, who was also another German immigrant. Now, he had moved over here and started himself a nice little business. It was very successful. And he mostly hires other immigrants who are new here and in search of work now little dolly is very pretty she has a great personality very charismatic so with her looks and her charming little personality comes a lot of friends among the factory workers and admirers as well she very quickly attracts the attention of the owner fred and at age 12 child they begin their relationship and when she is 17 years old the two of them decide to get married as Fred's wife, she remains popular amongst the factory workers. She oftentimes worked as a liaison between the employees and the very unlikable, unpersonable Fred. Fred is not a terrible guy. He's just a little bit distant. He just feels like I'm the owner around here. And so we're not friends his wife on the other hand was quite the opposite sis was out there like you got a friend in me okay when the road looks tough ahead and you miles and miles from your nice warm bed you got a friend in me that's very much what she was given now see oftentimes a little dolly is given the side eye for her relationship with the employees because a lot of people felt like it was just a little too friendly see the word was successful businessman fred prioritized his business endeavors and his company over his wife and this required him to be away from the house a lot of times spending long hours at the factory working fred would leave a little dolly alone in her room and sometimes she would stare at the wall and in the back of her mind she would hear her conscience call telling her that she need love after a while it just becomes too much for dolly to ignore from the beginning of their marriage his wife was sneaking and inviting her lovers into their home while he was away at work now quiet as it's kept fred liked to drink heavily when he was at home in his spare time and so he still was no good to entertain her fred of course had heard the rumors of his wife's rendezvous but 
and really cause much of an issue. This is the way that their marriage goes on for the next 16 years. And Fred had heard little rumors here and there, little whispers, people pulling him to the side to let him know that his wife had all of this going on. I don't know if he never called her or if he just didn't feel the need to take his money and run or what job, but he puts up with it. Fast forward to 1913, Dolly is now 33 years old. And in the meantime, when her man, well, all of her men, were at work because most times her lovers worked for her husband embarrassing she would spend her days at home practicing on her little sewing machine now one day she goes to whip out her little sewing machine to make her a nice little you know sexy little dress for one of her men's probably and she realizes that her sewing machine is not working. Dolly calls up her husband to vent about her machine not working and to say that she either needs a fixed child or she needs another machine pronto. And he promises to send someone over right away to get it fixed. Now the repairman that he has solicited for this service is a 17 year old by the name of Otto who works at the factory for him and also is a little handy. He tells Dolly not to worry that, you know, Otto is on the way. Honey, at this point, worrying is the last thing that Dolly is doing. There is a strapping young man on the way to the house. She has no time for worry. She meets Otto at the door wearing a robe and some stockings, child, and nothing else. This sewing machine is not the only thing that Miss Dolly wants this young man to put his hands on. And she invites him into the home so he can begin, you know, taking a look at the machine to see what needed to be done. Meanwhile, Dolly has that thigh out. She has that leg up. And she is slowly but surely working her way up to seducing this young man, which she's successful in doing so. Otto fixes that little sewing machine and he gets Miss Dolly together on his way out. But when he leaves, he is feeling all kinds of ways because... For one, he cannot believe this just happened. On the other hand, he's still feeling good about, you know, what just happened. But more than anything, he is a little bit worried that his boss might find out. Dolly had made it very clear that she expected this to be an ongoing thing. This could not just be a one-time hit it and quit it. And Otto is all for this, but at the same time, he's still very afraid, very worried that his boss will find out. Dolly, of course, assures him that if he just keeps his mouth closed about the whole thing and doesn't tell anybody this should not be a problem now at first they are conducting their little rendezvous their little affair in secret and they are meeting just at hotel rooms when she drops by the job to drop off fresh chicken and rice they act like they don't even know each other they give each other the bare minimum just a little you know hey how you doing barely any eye contact you know just pretending like nothing is going on but after a while them meeting up outside the home becomes a little burdensome and Dolly gets really bold she decides you know what no we are not going to continue to creep in and out of these hotel hallways just come to my house we can creep there at this point the two of them are having relations right there in the same bed that she shares with Fred now her neighbors were extremely nosy child just like me but they're a little more bold because I just would have been watching from afar and probably you know telling y'all their business her neighbors started asking questions they're like who is this guy that is always at the house Dolly tried to think a little quick on her feet she could have been a little quicker I guess but she comes up with him being her half brother who moved around a lot right now he's in town and so you know they'll see him dropping by the house ever so often at this point Dolly is realizing that they have been a little bit too careless attention was the last thing that they wanted she felt like she had remedied the situation by telling them that this was just her half brother Fred finds out about the affair and he confronts Dolly about it she admits to everything and vows to end the relationship immediately but instead sis actually has a different solution in mind Instead of severing ties with her lover and losing all the passion and thrill that had become a part of her daily little life or leaving her husband for her lover and severing ties with her money and her husband's bank account and this life of luxury she had grown accustomed to, she comes up with a plan to keep both men in her life. She convinces Otto to quit his job, which is a wonder he wasn't fired. 
But I guess if he fired everybody who, you know, took a little sip of his wife, then he probably wouldn't have that many workers. She has Otto quit the job and move into the attic of her home that she shares with Fred. If that's not messy enough, the attic you can only access from their bedroom. Dolly set him up a nice little space up there in the attic too. He had a cot to sleep on. He had a little lamp for lighting. He had books for when he got bored. Paper and pen for when he wanted to write something himself. Some little materials to keep himself entertained in the meantime when he wasn't down there entertaining her. Now I'm not trying to be messy and create no problems for those of y'all who watched this as a couple, but imagine your partner having somebody sleeping above you in a cot in your attic. Otto spends most of his downtime reading and he actually begins writing stories of his own about adventure and lust. Dolly also purchases groceries like a little stash of groceries separate just for him to have food up there as well. She can't have a little man up there hungry. He gotta eat. And they had a whole routine. Every morning she would see Fred off to work and as soon as she waves him down the driveway honey she would go pull the latch down for her lover to come down out of their ceiling her little flower in the attic and dolly was something serious because she had this man coming down doing housework so all of the things that she had to do while her husband was away the, the cleaning the laundry she actually has her little lover doing all of the things and you know she would help him too from time to time but he mostly did the chores and then they would spend the remaining of the time between him finishing and fred being expected to return from work between the sheets in his home at this point otto has basically become her own personal little sex slave okay he is cleaning doing laundry and servicing her up to eight times a day and then for the night he retreats to his little lair in the sky and has to live in complete silence until the next morning which i'm sure was not even hard for him to do i'm sure otto was tired all of the things that he was doing throughout the day for five whole years this is their daily routine without fred suspecting a thing fred has no idea that this man is literally sleeping right above him and has been in his house for five years and has never left little miss dolly is definitely happy with her setup mama has it going on she has her cake and she is also eating it too. That is until Fred comes home and he tells her that he thinks they should sell their house and move to LA. Things get a little bit complicated at this point, child, but not for long. For her, this does not mean the end of her longtime love affair. It just means she has to transition to LA a little careful. One thing about Zolly, baby, she is going to either find a way or make one. During the house hunting process, the only thing on her mind is finding a home suitable for her, her husband, and her lover. The two of them settle on a house overlooking Sunset Boulevard, and as soon as the ink is dry on the sale, she gives the address to Otto and tells him to go there. There is an attic already there that has all of the things that he needs. Just stay there and wait. So Otto goes and moves into the attic of the new home a couple of weeks before Fred and Dolly are due to move in. Dolly is something else. Dolly is slicker than fish hair at this point. She is more bold than anything though, really. Once the married couple moves in, life continues the same way it had been going for them for the next four years. Four more years this man is living right above Fred and he is thinking that the tinkering he hearing up there is just rats and roaches girl rolling around and it is definitely not that. Unfortunately though things between Fred and Dolly they progressively get worse and the two are arguing and fighting all of the time allegedly. On August 22nd 1922 one of these fights is really escalating. Their fighting actually wakes up sleeping Otto and he is listening from above. Now at some point during the fight, it becomes apparent that Fred has the upper hand and he is really becoming very aggressive and physical with Dolly and allegedly, this is the only reason that he descends from the attic. Child slid down them attic stairs like a certified stripper and he has two guns in hand. The two men instantly begin fighting, tussling all over the place. And in the end, Fred is shot three times. 
At this point, Dolly and Otto are panicking. They know that the police had to have been called by the neighbors and so now it is only a matter of time before they show up and so they have to do something really quick. The plan that they come up with is for Otto to stuff Dolly in a closet and lock it from the outside. The story is going to be that intruders broke in with the intent to rob the place, Fred tried to stop them. He was shot in all of the chaos and commotion. And as for little old Otto, well, he takes the weapons and he ascends back up to the attic. The two of them figure that this alone should give her a solid alibi because if she was locked up in the closet, child, she couldn't have possibly done this to herself. And they don't know that he's there. The police show up and Dolly is telling them you know her story and how scary it was and the police are a little bit skeptical because they're like why would they shoot him and just lock you up and if they shot him after the fact why not come back and shoot you they know where they left you this is not adding up it's not making the sense but they have no evidence that miss mamas is telling a lie and so they have to just take her word for it at this point point. and now this is a whole widow out here she goes and collects on that insurance policy that she had on her husband she of course wastes no time moving forward she goes and buys herself a new house to live in new cars this does not waste any time moving on with her life now with her husband being gone one would assume that she could go on and live out her truth freely let her man down from the ceiling but a normal life with Otto is not exactly what sis wanted at this point when Dolly moves into her new home she finds another one with an attic where she can keep Otto and again the two of them establish a routine in which she would take him down for certain hours of the day. He would perform these tasks, he would pleasure her, and then at night he will go back up into the attic. They had actually grown quite fond of this little arrangement. So you know how I told you little Otto likes to write stories. He likes to write fiction, right? He's actually quite good at it. A couple of his stories get published and begin to sell and are making him a little bit of money. He is actually doing so well that he saves up enough money to buy himself a typewriter, you know, to make writing a bit easier, invest in his business. And the more time he is spending on his writing, the more neglected his little lover is feeling. Dolly feels like she is yet again in a situation where she is being put second to a man's work. And Miss Mamas has a need okay she begins to date another man a lawyer by the name of Herman Shapiro and unfortunately for her I don't know why sis didn't think of this his career also limits the time that he has available to spend with her still her needs are not being met not even between two men so she adds a third to the roster Roy Klump Roy was immediately smitten by his newfound love he loved him some Dolly and Dolly she she liked him. You know, it wasn't equal, but she, she liked Roy. He wasn't bad. But once she realized how head over heels he was for her, she also realizes that she can use this to her advantage. She was comfortable in the fact that Roy loved her so much and was so infatuated with her that he would more than likely be willing to do some questionable things for her. Things like, you know, ditching a murder weapon. Without much hesitation or much questioning at all, he takes the weapon and hides it per her request. Now, Dolly isn't into Roy all that much. He's okay, but the, the mutual feelings just were not there. Sis still had that itch that needed to be scratched. And so then she goes and seduces her next door neighbor. And just as she had done with Roy, she sweet talks him into hiding the other gun for her. Now with the evidence being gone, sis is feeling like she can move more freely throughout her day to day. She is not just a sugar mama, she is a boss. And what she says goes. Unfortunately, one of the things that I had to go was Roy. She ends things with him, gives him the boot, and he is not happy about it at all. Child Roy thought he was about to ride the Sugar Mama Express until the wheels fell off. Them being cut off was not in the plans and also left a sour taste in his little mouth for little Miss Dolly. And he figures that if he is not about to be laid up in a hammock in the shade being fed grapes, then no one else is. Roy goes and retrieves the gun that he hid for Dolly. 
police and takes it to the police along with the real story about what had happened to Fred. At least the version that had been given to him from Dolly. Dolly is immediately picked up and arrested, but the police are still kind of confused as to how sis had locked herself in the closet that day. Like, girl, how did you manage to pull that stunt? Now, when she is locked up, the answer to that question becomes very clear. When she asks Shapiro to buy groceries and take them to her half-brother who is there living in the attic. If that isn't odd enough, she gives him instructions to tap on the ceiling three times so that he knows he can come out. Do you know how much explaining we have to come following this conversation? But for whatever reason, he does as he is asked to do. Will. Kind of. Because he does take the grocery by the house and he taps on the ceiling just as he had been told to do. But he does not leave right after this. He waits. Otto comes down from the attic and Otto is so excited to see another person because mind you, over the last 10 years, he's barely seen anyone outside of Dolly. He comes down, gets to talking and the true nature of his relationship with Dolly is then revealed. Baby, she is just trying to get Otto fed and he comes down telling all of the business. He is just speaking so candidly about how he has been living in this lady's attic for the last 10 years, performing as her sex slave. I don't know what Shapiro has experienced in his day for this not to make him run for the hills, but he does not. He has this conversation with Otto, confronts Dolly about it, but then chooses to continue their relationship, but Otto has to go. So he kicks Otto out of the house, tells him, look, here's a little bit of money, find your way, but this here's my woman. So you ain't gotta go home, but you gotta get the hell out of here. Dolly is in no position to object to this. She cannot afford to piss Shapiro off for a number of reasons. He knows too much. And not only that, he is her lawyer. He is acting as her lawyer, officially her lover and her secretary at this point so she just has to go with it this actually proves to be a good move for dolly he helped her beat her conviction and then the two of them basically just ride off into the sunset together child living happily ever after we know how dolly gets down when the cat's away baby dolly is gonna play with everything and everybody and so seven years into their happily ever after the two of them split she breaks things off with Shapiro and decides she just wants to go about her life with the rest of the money that she has left and live in peace without him. Shapiro was extremely upset about this, but he wasn't as mad as he was on the day that he found out that Otto had moved back into her home and the two had continued their little everlasting love affair. Sad, heartbroken, angry, and confused, he goes down to the local police station with all of the information that he has regarding Fred's death and tells them everything. See, Shapiro had managed to avoid having her convicted initially because the weapon that was retrieved, it had corroded so bad that they were not able to prove or tie this gun to her or the shooting of Fred, and so it was thrown out. Unfortunately for her, Lawyer Bay knew all of the things to say to put her in hot water. This time, warrants are issued for both Dr and her longtime lover Otto. His defense team did exactly what they were supposed to do. They claimed that he was under the enslavement and control of Dolly and she pretty much forced him to do this using of course her money and power as a tool to control him. His defense claimed that he too was a victim of Dolly's. Now luckily for him he was charged with manslaughter and by that time the statute of limitations was up on that and so he was pretty much free to go. Now Dolly faces the manslaughter charge, but she also faces charges of conspiracy. Her trial ends with a hung jury, and it takes them so long to set a trial date for trial number two that the indictment itself is eventually dropped before that happens. And so Sis walks free as well. Sis was released. She walked out of there, got all of her money, and lived out the rest of her life as a wealthy woman. She didn't die until 1961 and sis was 80 years old.
and I bet you she moved Otto back up into that attic. I hope somebody checked the attic in 1961 and he is not still up there, girl. Somebody needs to go around to Miss Dolly's house and knock on the attic door, girl, and see if somebody answers. Because if they didn't check, sis could probably still be up there. Let me just give y'all my thoughts right quick. Because I have a couple of things I just have to get off my chest about this case. I don't think for a second that he came down during a fight, child. I think they planned their whole thing out and they planned to take Fred out. And that is unfortunate. And they almost didn't get away with it because Dolly talks too much and so does her little boy toy. Not that they should have gotten away with it, but you know what I mean. Bella is not gonna let me close out my video in peace. Those are pretty much my little thoughts. Like that's the only thing that's just bothering me. And so of course I want to know what your thoughts are below on this case. Don't forget to like my video before you leave. Subscribe if you have not. As always, I appreciate you so much for spending your time with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Bella say peace. I'm giving earthy mama, you know, what do they call Mother Earth? Do they call is it Mother Earth? Mother Nature. That's it. If you are new here or you don't know, you can request videos in the comment section of the first, yeah. Well, hello there. Y'all, today the kids just won't leave me alone. I don't know what it is, girl, why? But they just, I guess maybe they just want to say hello. They just obviously want to be seen so bad. So here is little mama. Bella is growing like a damn Tamagotchi pet. Look how big she is now. Like, I feel like every day we wake up and she is just a little bit bigger. Felt like she had remedied ugh, writing stories of his own about adventure and lust. Basically autobiographies, pretty much. Because if this is not an adventure of lust, I don't know what is a couple of weeks before she and Day, who is David. This fighting of theirs actually wakes up Fred. Fred is not sleeping above, girl. At this point, Dolly and Otto, they don't even sound cute together. Still, her needs are not being met, not even between two men. Honestly, that's not all that unheard of. Dolly really wasn't into Chloe. His name is not Chloe's clump. Exactly where to find. Shapiro was extremely upset. Except, what does that even mean, girl? Girl, I'm about to have a fit. Oh, it's about to be some shit. Like, imagine if something like that popped off. Now, don't I know you from somewhere a long time ago? I don't say it. No, no, I don't think so. Not you growling at my singing though. All right, Bella, you gonna see my peoples out? Why your breath smell like burnt popcorn? Girl, don't you lick me, girl. Don't get that on me. Y'all, Bella is so sweet to me now. We only fight like twice a day.